Hi guys, in this video, I'm gonna talk about the Kaplan-Meier and the Nelson-Allen graphs or curves. The Kaplan-Meier graph is a non-parametric estimator of the survival function. It's sort of one minus the empirical uh, CDF function, uh, only taking into account censoring. And without censoring, it would be exactly one minus the ECDF. Nelson-Allen, also called Fleming-Harrington, is just the same for the cumulative hazard function. Okay, so since our data uh, is always discrete, we don't have infinite amount of data, we only have a finite uh, countable amount of data, we treat it as a discrete case. So we look at the discrete cases of survival and cumulative hazard function that I've shown in the first video. Okay, so some notation that we need. Uh, we said D is the number of all events that we uh, have in our data. So let's take all these events and arrange them by time such that T1 will uh, be less than T2 will be less than TD, okay? And now for each event time, TJ, uh, DJ will be the number of events that happen on that uh, time. So for example, if uh, our times are, is given by days, so D5 will be the number of people dying at day five or the number of uh, events that happened uh, by at day five. Uh, and if there are no ties in times, meaning that uh, each time only had one event, then dj will be equal to one for all j. And yj, capital yj, will be uh, this sum, which if I put into words, it's just the number of all the remaining events at this time. So it's all the people who still didn't experience events or censoring uh, up to this time. Uh, so this is also called the number at risk at the current time, at time tj. Okay, and so it's basically you sum over the indicator variable that their time, either event or sensor, is bigger than the current time. Okay, so remember that the hazard is defined as the probability of an event happening at some time given that it didn't happen until that time. Okay, in the discrete case, we wrote it like this. Okay, it's the probability that it happens now on this time, given that it didn't happen until now, so that it can only happen now and further along. And we show that this is equal to this thing over here. Okay, so one option to estimate this thing is by dj over yj. And this kind of makes intuitive sense, right? I mean, if I would ask you, how would you estimate the probability that uh, the event happened in this current time. Well, you would just go to take all the events that happen at that time and divide it by all the observations that you have, right? So that would be dj divided by n. And if I would to ask you, how would you approximate the survival uh, function at that time? Well, that would just be all the people who didn't have the event yet, which is given by yj, it's the number still at risk, divided by the total number of observation. And then if you do this, the ends cancels and you get dj divided by yj. So there is some intuition into why we could uh, estimate h, the hazard, by dj divided by yj. And so all that Kaplan-Meier does, and also Nelson Allen afterwards, is it takes the formula that we already calculated, right? For the discrete case, we already showed that the survival uh, at time x is just given by this thing over here. And instead of using uh, this theoretical hazard that we are not really sure about, it estimates it with the djyj. So the estimated curve, the estimated survival curve will just, it starts at one, okay? So before the first event happened, it will be one. And then af and any time after the first event, it will be uh, the multiplication of this where the hazard is calculated by dj divided by yj for all the different event time. Okay, and you can get, this, this is an example of one curve that I made in R. Okay, and you can see it gives some indication about the uh, survival chances, uh, or the, it gives an estimator of the survival function of the survival curve. So if our event is time to death, if our event is death, then we can kind of look at, okay, 50% is somewhere here. We draw a line and we say, okay, about 
50, more than 50% of the people, of the patients, won't reach the first year. They will die before the first year. And so this gives us some information. And notice that it doesn't go to zero, right? We said that the survival function always starts at one, at time zero. And if the time goes to infinity, eventually it will go down to zero. Then why here it doesn't happen? And so why here it doesn't happen is due to censoring. Because of censoring, we won't get exactly to zero. If it wouldn't be for censoring, uh, we would get to zero. Uh, but here, because of censoring, we are not, it's not guaranteed. And what it also means is that we can only be certain kind of about the survival curve where we have data. Okay, so for example, here was the last event, the last time that there was an event in our data. So we can only be sure about uh, the survival in this uh, time frame. Beyond this, we don't know what's going on. Basically, we can interpolate uh, our data. We cannot extrapolate further to events that happening after uh, the last event occurred in our data. And now, suppose we want to look at the cumulative hazard function. So remember, we already established this relationship. And so it also means this relationship. And so one way to do it is just take this graph and take the minus log of it and get an estimator of the cumulative hazard function. And we would get something like this. But this is one way that we started from Kaplan-Meier and then maybe we also wanted to look at this uh, cumulative hazard. Nelson Hallen basically goes directly to the cumulative hazard function. So remember that one way to look at the cumulative hazard function in the discrete case, we call it H1, was by this. It was the analogous for the continuous case. And so what Nelson Allen does, it just, again, it estimates the hazard at the current time by dj divided by yj, by the same estimator that we've seen before. And so this will be our estimation for the cumulative hazard function. And again, we can actually start from here and due to the relationship between the survival and the cumulative hazard, get some estimation also for the survival function. And notice that here I, I made it with a wave, a tilde, okay? And here I made it with a hat. But notice that the tilde is not equal to the hat, okay? There are some differences. If you start with a Kaplan-Meier curve for the survival and then do some transformation to get uh, the cumulative hazard, it's not exactly equal than doing Nelson Allen uh, for the cumulative hazard and vice versa. If you start with a Nelson Allen and then you do a transformation to get the survival, it's not the same as doing Kaplan mine. Okay, and some, some final notes before I show you a bit of code. Uh, you can also get confidence intervals in these graphs, but the math is a bit complicated and so I won't show it right now. There are also ways to show events or sensor uh, in the plot. So showing you where censoring happened. Uh, you can also, of course, plot with ggplot. Here I plotted with the regular R, and you can see the plots are not so nice. You can use ggplot. There's also a package called serveminer, and it has ggserveplot, which really um, makes it even easier for you. And you can also do Kaplan-Meier uh, or Nelson-Allen curves uh, by strata. And so let's move into R, and I show you a bit more. Okay, so here I'm going to use the two libraries that I'm going to need. One is survival. It's the biggest library uh, to do survival analysis in R. The other is serve minor that has a nice plotting option. You can set up a seed. And now I wanna show you that the Kaplan-Meier is actually equal to one minus the ECDF in the case when there are no censoring. So I'm going to set up some data and notice I didn't make any censoring. Instead, I made the delta to be all one. So all my data is events. And then at, to do a Kaplan-Meier, I first have to create a serve object and give it the time and the delta. And then I call serve fit with y, and then this tilde to one, basically meaning I'm, I don't want you to divide it into any different groups, into any different strata. And then I could do plot. And this is uh, the Kaplan-Meier plot. You can see it does go to zero here because again, we have no censoring. And basically what it does, it's, this plot is just the KM object gives you the different times ordered by uh, from the lowest to the biggest. And it also gives you the KM serve, which is the K 
Kaplan-Meier estimator for survival at each of these times. If we do this, you can see it's really similar. It's not 100% though. You see there are some differences. The differences is due to plotting. So the way a Kaplan-Meier plot is, uh, is happening is that if an, an event happened, it will just go like this. Okay, so there was an event and then the survival went down and it goes like this. If you call lines, there is some diagonal happening. So it will go like this and then it will do a diagonal and goes like this. And this is why there is some little discrepancy between the two curves, but these two curves should be exactly the same. And now let me show you that this is exactly like the ECDF. So if I call ECDF, you see that now it's exactly the same. And even here, if you see a little bit where it's not, it's just because I need more points to exactly cover that little place where I missed it. Yeah, but again, without censoring, uh, the Kaplan-Meier is exactly one minus the ECDF. And now let's show how it looks with censoring. So here I did some random censoring. Okay, I, I take the sensor time randomly, also from an exponential distribution, but now with parameter two. I take the time to be the minimum of between these two. I take the delta to be whether the time was before censoring or not. I do exactly the same, create a serve object, call serve feed, and then plot it. And here you can see this is what I get. And uh, you see it looks a bit different. First of all, it doesn't go to zero. Uh, and second of all, there's a lot of area here where we don't get so many events. Okay, here it looks like there are a lot of events happening, but here there are not so many events. It's not to say that the events didn't happen. The events did happen here. It's just that we didn't see them due to censoring. So the observations, if, we, if it weren't for the censoring, we would see them here. But because of censoring, they disappeared. So we only are left with these events here. And you can see big drops also. OK, and another thing I want to show is that you could take the Kaplan-Meier and then get the cumulative hazard function, right? We said it's just the minus log of the Kaplan-Meier. And so this would be the graph that we get. This is one way to do it. The second approach would be just to uh, plot it directly. So when you calculate the surfit, it also gives you uh, a direct estimation of the hazard, what the, the Nelson Hallen or the Fleming Harrington. So you could do this. Again, if you see this and this, this is exactly the difference between the way that the Kaplan Meyer, the surfit is plotting, which is like this. But if you do a regular plot, then it does it more diagonally for some reason. And if I want to compare the cumulative hazard by the first transforming and then by the directly calculating the Nelson Allen, these are the differences. You see there are sm small differences between them. They are not exactly the same. This is the graph. And I could do the same for the survival function. I can plot the actual survival and then the survival transforming the Nelson Allen. And you see, again, it's not exactly the same, though it's rather close. And another thing we could do is get confidence interval. As I said, I won't go uh, into depth how these are calculated in this video, perhaps in a future video. Uh, we can also show where the censoring happened. So every point in the line here is where uh, a censoring occurred. Another thing we could do is use the serve minor. OK, so we could take all this data. We have these objects, right? We have the time, the the survival, the Kaplan-Meier, the cumulative hazard. We can take this and plot this in ggplot manually, but there's also a ggsurfplot from the serve minor uh, library, which does it for us. And we get something like this. There's a lot of options you can do to uh, customize it. So you should maybe check it out, but this will give you a ggplot type of uh, graph and you can make nicer graphs with it. And so the last thing I want to show in code is how you could create a survival, a Kaplan-Meier curve uh, by strata. So suppose we have the same number of data, but now it's divided into two groups, one which experienced uh, a, a treatment and one that didn't experience a treatment. And since I'm generating the data, I'm going to do that. The one that uh, got the treatment here coded with zero has a less risk than the one that didn't get the treatment here coded with one. Uh, and then I do the same thing, randomize some sensor time create the time, create the delta. And now the only thing I need to do is when I call surfit, I uh, regress it into the Z, into the groups. 
So now it will create a Kaplan-Meier curve for each group separately, okay? And if we do this now, you can see that it created one uh, Kaplan-Meier for the group that had the treatment. Of course, this is all simulated and on purpose. And so you can see it ha they have higher survival. They survive longer, they, they die less. And another Kaplan-Meier curve for the group that didn't have the treatment, and you see they die more quickly than the other group. So this is also a use of the Kaplan-Meier uh, to kind of really visualize the difference between uh, treatments or a treatment compared to non-treatment, etc. Okay, so this is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe, and I see you all in the next one.